and the way that it is taking us towards something that you could uh, call a global brain. But uh, it's not really computers I want to start with. I want to actually start back in uh, the early 70s uh, when I was working with a guy named George Simon. Uh, there was this huge ferment in the 70s, something that you know, if some of you may remember we called the human potential movement. And it was really about how do we tap into something uh, you know, inside that will make us uh, you know, more, better. Uh, but his you know, key notion was that language was a map and that we could actually create maps of human consciousness, both uh, you know, in history and as it went forward in time. And uh, we really need to understand how language shapes and frames our thinking. And that ability of language uh, to enable us to see was a, is a big part of this notion of language as a map. He started with uh, a guy named Alfred Korzybski, the founder of General Semantics. He had this wonderful term he used called time binding. He said, human progress is dependent on time binding. And the first tool for time binding is language. That's our ability to take something from the here and now and pass it on over time and space. So the structural differential began with a parabola. You know, uh, Korzybski's point was reality itself is infinite, right? And then the circle dangling from that parabola was our experience of whatever that infinite thing is, you know, which is limited. You know, we only, our sensorium only takes in part of uh, what's actually out there. And then we attach labels to it. We name it, right? So George, kind of being a typical, you know, sort of uh, syncretist of the, of, of the 70s, sort of mashed that up with the integral yoga of Sri Aurobindo, who kind of had this story about the supermental you know, consciousness that was going to come down, uh, you know, and, and was the future of humanity. And George kind of said, oh, well, actually, kind of, that's like Korzybski, you know, the, that infinite parabola, that's this supermental future of humanity, and we bring it down into our experience, and then we, we label it and so on, and we tell stories about it. And then he added another element, which is that you integrate it into yourself, and it becomes part of who you are. He also kind of made the point that this happens at a species level, or he believed that this happens at a species level as well as at an individual level. So, you know, we're collectively the sum of all that's gone before us. Our human experience passed down, incorporated, you know, in, in ourselves, in culture. And he also had the notion that human consciousness is still evolving. And the biggest thing that I'm talking about is really the convergence of computing and human potential, and the way that it is taking us towards something that you could uh, call a global brain. <laughs> called time binding. You know, we bring it down into our, our, our experience, and, and then we, we label it and so on, and we tell stories about it. It's called time binding. He said... Human progress is dependent on time binding. And the first tool for time binding is language. That's our ability to take something from the here and now and pass it on over time and space. And that ability of language uh, to enable us to see was a, is a big part of this notion of language as a map. So the structural differential began with a parabola. You know, uh, Korzybski's point was reality itself is infinite, Right? And then the circle dangling from that parabola was our experience of whatever that infinite thing is, you know, which is limited. You know, we only, our sensorium only takes in part of uh, what's actually out there. And then we attach labels to it. We name it, right? It's called time binding. <laughs> and the biggest thing that I'm talking about is really the convergence of computing and human potential and the way that it is taking us towards something that you could uh, call a global brain. So when I say we're building a network-mediated global mind, you know, it's really a set of technologies that connect us in new ways, in the same way that language connected us in a new way, writing connected us in a new way. And now we have a whole set of technologies that are connecting us in new ways, called time-binding. 
human progress is dependent on time binding. And the first tool for time binding is language. That's our ability to take something from the here and now and pass it on over time and space. We have in increasingly rapid ability for information to leap from mind to mind. So, you know, we're collectively the sum of all that's gone before us. Our human experience passed down, incorporated, you know, in, in ourselves, in culture. And human consciousness is still evolving. You know, you can think about human con the evolution of human consciousness is actually the evolution of our ability to transfer ideas and information from mind to mind. You think spoken language, written language, mass media, the Internet. We have in increasingly rapid ability for information to leap from mind to mind. <laughs> and, of course, in our smartphones, uh, we're, we're, we're really experiencing this next uh, you know, aspect of human-computer symbiosis of this information retrieval, intelligence augmentation by our ability to effectively have an outboard brain. You know, that's, um, you know, really this incredible uh, power of, of, of uh, recollection and memory, you know, being made possible through this uh, new kind of man-machine symbiosis. Our ability to effectively have an outboard brain. How many of you actually refer to your phone as your outboard brain? <laughs> you know, so it's AI plus the recorded memory of augmented humans. And that's really my point. The global brain is us, connected and augmented. The main point that I, I, I think I'm, I'm trying to make is when we think about uh, the future of kind of a, a, a you know, future artificial intelligence, you know, whatever, it's, it's sort of like this, this AI. And Sounds like you're saying it's not artificial anymore. I don't think it's, it's artificial. Us. It really is us. It's yeah. like we are beca becoming a multicellular organism in a new way. You know, it's, it's getting, you know, at a certain point, this, this uh, process of, hmm. you know, communication uh, becomes sufficiently intense. The structure becomes uh, sufficient that we actually become something qualitatively different. And, you know, you can look at, um, you know, again, this notion that, that a, a meme can spread uh, you know, Twitter memes, you know, spread, can spread in a flash worldwide. Um, you know, of course, that could happen in the days of, of, you know, mass media as well. But I think it's happening much faster. Pantheon of Greek gods of uh, this neosphere that you're describing? Oh, absolutely. 